Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's topic, I actually wanted to share with you guys about the number of tanks to use for selective breeding. And one of the reasons for this uh, episode is actually uh, to one of the comments that actually wanted, uh, he actually wanted to actually understand more about the number of tanks to use in terms of selective breeding. However, before we go into today's topic, I actually wanted to give a special shout out to Corey from uh, Aquarium Co-op. Uh, I actually got this shirt uh, from him when we were in Germany. Uh, the size is a little bit small in, in that sense. I, I thought it could fit me. I tried but it's uh, it's a little bit tight fitting. So Corey, the next time I, I, I meet up with you, I'm sure to you know to have one more of this. I will you know give this to my son who is able to wear this. I think Jake is, uh, he, he will definitely grow into this size. You know, thanks for the shirt. Appreciate it. And moving on to today's topic, you know, uh, regarding the uh, the number of tanks that is required for selective breeding, uh, understand that you know, uh, in general, what we normally share is that we usually use about three tanks per species, uh, per type of streams for selective breeding. However, you know, we can understand that there is also a a, a space constraint, you know, a tank constraint, like the number of tanks that can be actually be uh, set up to be utilized for selective breeding. And we kind of like you know talk through this and, and we kind of like innovate uh, in a way that we, we wanted to to kind of streamline that uh, and try to consolidate or make use of the number of tanks that we actually have uh, for selective breeding. Uh, so for example, if we are talking about boas for snowfall, this kind of uh, uh, streams that we normally uh, breed we usually use up to three or four tanks uh, for selective breeding or even sometimes even more than that. Um, and one of the reasons is because we wanted to, to, to really you know, refine the, the direction of the stream. Um, and from here, you can actually see that you know, from, from Boa's perspective, you can actually, uh, usually we use about minimum of three tanks. So for example, you have the main breeding tank and then you have the grow up tank. The grow up tank is where you know you put all the streamlets in, in, in there, uh, regardless whether it's from uh, which, whichever batch, uh, as long as from the main breeding tank is being brought into the, the, the streamlets are being you know, net into the uh, grow up tank. So during the grow up tank, you actually, you can actually see uh, there are varieties of you know types of uh, you know, look alike or you know like boas and stuff like that. However, we would like to you know take take the opportunity to also you know when they start to grow up or when you actually see good potential, you actually move them to the next tank, and then you move from that very good potential one. You can actually you know can refine that and have another tank as well. So, from that perspective, you can actually use more and more tanks. And what size do I actually remove the babies out from the the growing or the main breeding tank? I actually remove them as long as they are below 0.8 cm and the reason is because at 0.8 cm the streamlets, you know the male streamlets especially, they can actually fly and they start to mate with the main breeding tank and if you have a you know a not a very nice male who you know kind of like breed with your main breeding stock females, uh, you know that, that brood might not have a lot of good quality uh, so-called boas in, in that perspective. Uh, however, you know, using uh, boas as an example, you have you need to have more tanks uh, for selective breeding. However, you know, if let's say for example you are uh, breeding like deep blue boats or black king kong or red king kong, uh, from our perspective, you know, what we normally do is that we don't usually use that kind of methodology as anymore. And one of the reasons is because you you kind of like defeat the purpose of having so many tanks of, of that uh, like for example red king kong because a lot of them breed really true um, like for example red devils uh, they breed really true so most of the ones that comes out are red devil the only difference is that is it uh, is it going to be very nice or is it not going to be very nice in that stand in, in, in that perspective so those that are not very nice for example uh, then you will just have to remove them into a cow tank or a planted tank, you know, where you have all this uh, community, so-called community tank of, uh, you know, I wouldn't even say that they are actually cows. They are actually not being used back to to dilute the genetics of the stream, and that's the reason why you know I I move them out from from those tanks. So in in essence, you have one main breeding tank. You can maybe have even two just for you know safety precautions, uh, precaution. 
where you have two of these um, breeding tanks and then you just remove all those males, uh, extra males and of course you remove um, the ones that you don't want out from the main breeding tank and that's that's about it you know you don't really have to uh, cater more and more tanks for those uh, really stable uh, line streams and that's the reason why you know we can actually you know kind of consider like for example if you have nine tanks or ten tanks you can actually consider uh, keeping more than three types so in, in, in general if you have nine tanks you technically you can only keep three types of uh, streams for selective breeding however you know we need to uh, because you know space is always a, a luxury for some of you guys and one of the things that and one of the things is that so you have you know three tanks uh, for each of the species or each of the type that you actually want to to, to selectively breed then you will only have three types of streams so uh, what we actually do is that we kind of like uh, kind of like you know think through it and innovate and to ensure that you know you can actually have more than three types of streams um, for selective breeding even though that you only have nine tanks right so for example if you have nine tanks and if you want to keep a uh, snowfall you want to uh, keep red stardust and you want to keep you know uh, deep blue boats prl um, and, and something else i think that's always doable it's only those species that require a lot more selective breeding a lot more tanks like for example the red snowfall uh, or boas then technically you can actually use more than um, two tanks so for example if you use the nine tanks example you can have the first snowfall uh, for three of the tanks and then you can have red stardust for one tank you can have uh, boa for another three tanks so that makes up, uh, you know, that makes up seven tanks already. And then you have another two more tanks. You can actually keep uh, streams like uh, deep blue boats or something else where you can actually have another planted tank, you know, on the side uh, where you can actually move all the streams that you actually don't want out into those, uh, you know, planted tank as well. So, so technically you can keep more than three streams, three types of streams if you have nine tanks and, and if you want to do selective breeding. So I think the, the, the key message here is that you don't have to really follow the three, 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 three kind of uh, methodology in terms of uh, stream breeding or selective breeding. And that's the reason why, you know, uh, you have, you are free to actually choose the type of streams that you actually want to keep and actually want to do selective breeding. So as long as you have that kind of a criteria, um, then you can actually have more, more than one type or more than three types of streams that you can actually keep. Um, so, so I think the long, long story short for, for this video is, is really about you know, the types of streams that you want to keep um, and which are the types of streams you actually want to do, um, you know, refine selective breeding. So that's, that's where you have more tanks uh, allocated, to, allocated to it. Um, and at what size, like I've mentioned, you know, anything be below 0.8, you can actually remove them. And one of the reasons is, you know, we don't want the, the males to actually breed with the females uh, accidentally. And also, you know, the streams actually grow much faster in terms of their, their size, their, everything, you know, in a, in a grow up tank. So there's a lot of positive in, in, in that sense, if you kind of uh, remove them. Uh, of course, definitely, definitely in, from a time perspective, you actually use a lot of uh, a lot of time to actually do that kind of. So you can actually uh, do more than three types of uh, three types of streams on, uh, in that sense, um, right? And then coming back, you know, uh, in terms of you know water changes, you can actually do a lot more water changes to actually you know uh, trigger uh, molting for the streamlets to actually grow much faster, so that we can actually uh, you know use them or kind of like see them grow faster and then you can actually do you know because one of the things is that if you do a lot bigger water changes and more frequent water changes to your main breeding tank the the adults may not be able to take it in the sense that they may drop the eggs and, and things like that because there's a lot of fluctuation uh, however from for a streamlet tank you know they are they are very adept very adaptive because they are juveniles they are small and you can actually do a lot more water changes more frequent water changes and you can actually uh, you know add a lot more uh, food in there so that they can actually uh, you know a lot more food a lot more biofilm and that's the reason why we need to have more water changes as well so we kind of like you know uh, get them up and you know get them up to size uh, for for breeding purposes 
And I think, you know, uh, from that perspective, you can actually see that, you know, uh, regardless whether is it uh, uh, deep blue boats or, or PRL or, you know, or, or things that you, you just want to keep them and do not want to really uh, do refined selective breeding, then definitely you can just keep them in one tank. And then for those uh, not so nice ones, you can just remove them. And the males, you have to remove them as well. So what you actually, uh, in essence, you actually do is that you actually control the male and you also control the, the number of uh, uh, not so nice streams that you actually do not want out of the tank. And, and that you, in, 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 in a nutshell, you kind of like have a selective breeding tank in that just one tank alone. Um, you just do not improve it. You just continue to maintain the line. So uh, from a genetic standpoint, unless you do a cross back, uh, you, you kind of like continue to maintain the line. Having it doing a cross back uh, actually helps to improve the line as well. I think this is being discussed uh, a lot uh, in the in the dogs and the horses or you know livestock uh, you know space and that's how they actually do uh, you know genetics improvement in terms of that however you know when we do a lot of crossback the genetics are being very is, is very narrow it gets narrower and narrower it means that there will be a lot more uh, chances or opportunities for uh, deform deforming uh, deform streams uh, you know your your streamlets or your females uh, do not get buried uh, or they get buried and the eggs do not hatch or when they hatch the streamers do not survive so there's quite a lot of uh, genetic uh, issues when you do a lot of uh, you know cross back especially you know especially when you do a cross back it gets very very narrow uh, brothers and sisters like I've mentioned before in one of the videos they are not ideal however you know uh, we understand that you know brothers and sisters if you want to maintain the the line in the long run you know you you kind of like separate them into two two different uh parallels and then you kind of do a a, a cross back uh or you know close cousin kind of a cross so for example uh tank a b c will breed you know c will have where you breed with tank you can actually breed them with uh, either a1 b1 or c1 you know you do you do that kind of uh, close cousin kind of a cross um, so over time, you know, the, the, the line is still maintained and you do not um, worry about having to um, kind of like afraid of having too, too much deformities in, in, in that sense. So I think uh, in all in all, um, from a breeding perspective, from a selective breeding perspective, the number of tanks, you know, in summary, and the number of tanks you, you, you actually use is not cast in stone. Uh, you can actually use depending on uh, what do you actually want to do. So what's the, direc the direction you actually want to, to move forward. Uh, and those streams that you really want to refine really well, you have to use more, more tanks uh, because then you will be able to really select them out from, from that perspective. Um, and you know, in summary, uh, we really want to enc encourage you know, a, a lot of uh, selective breeding because selective breeding helps to improve uh, the genetics as well in, in, in the sense that you know, when you do selective breeding you actually make the streams look nicer and nicer and it, it, it's, it's a joy to actually see them uh, breed out uh, nice nice looking streams so uh, that's all for this episode thank you for watching uh, for those who are new to this video please remember to subscribe to this uh, channel and then give a thumbs up for those who are you know who likes this video and until next time peace out